All right. So uh, thank you very much for writing. Um, I'm, I'm quite surprised because this is an intelligent response, and it was from Reddit. Uh, that's I don't know how that happens. So anyways, uh, you write, Chapter 3 seems to suggest that almost without exception, the mannerisms of gays are markedly feminine and that most will self-identify, at least in some meaningful way, as a woman. Uh, ew, that make me a lesbian. Uh, he's quoting uh, from the book where I talk about my ex-boyfriend. I, I asked him why he doesn't date women, even though he apparently knew how to flirt with them and like being around them. And he said, ew, that, that would make me a lesbian. You know, because it's so wrong to be in same-sex relationships, right? So anyways, um, what I would say is, is no, I, I don't think gay men self-identify as a woman. Uh, I, I don't think they go all that way. That's sort of the whole point, is they're still men. But, they are, but the mannerisms of gays are markedly feminine. Now, the whole point of Guerrero is that you can be masculine and like masculine men. Now, you can be masculine and like feminine men as well. But the whole point is most men have a bisexual potential. So my point is not to say that same sex, that, that being attracted to men makes you same sex or makes you feminine to begin with. But that and, and, and the point then is if there are some gay men that are not feminine, then they probably don't belong in the gay category to begin with. You write, uh, continuing, of course, my experiences are only anecdotal in comparison, but I've rarely come across this. I know a great many guys, I know a great many gay guys who have no outwardly effeminate mannerisms or at least not beyond a similar amount of mannerisms in straight men. I also don't know a single gay guy who identifies as more of a woman than a man other than as a joke. They know they're gay men. As in they jokingly co copy a feminine social cue, hey girlfriend, but if you've asked them whether they'd be put in the male or female locker room, then they'd say male. Anything more than that, I think, is conflating transgendered with homosexuality. Well, again, I think the whole point with homosexuality is that it comes in many different varieties. And if you read Chapter 10, you'll, figure, you'll see that homosexuality came... Well, homosexuality was made up as if you're a man, you're attracted to other men. That's same-sex attraction. That's in one distinct category. But there's many different kinds of same-sex attractions. Okay, you can be masculine, attracted to masculine, masculine, feminine, uh, the pederasty in, in Greece, which was between generally masculine men. Uh, one was a little older than the other. But the whole point is homosexuality, homosexuality got conflated under one label. Every instance of same-sex sex, sex with, uh, two men, between two men uh, meant the same thing. It was homosexuality, non-procreative. And in the last... I don't know, maybe half a century or century, uh, homosexuality got conflated with this effeminate subvariant. Okay, now to say that it, uh, that uh, that that this is conflating with the transgendered, well, that's sort of the point. Lots of things flying about. Uh, the whole point is that um, is that gay is is a kind of transgendered light. Okay, so it's not that gay men are are fully men or fully female, that's not the point. It's that they are transgender light, okay? Uh, you continue. This ties in with the comments in Chapter 3 of the sometimes hypocritical hatred of effeminacy by effeminate gays. But from what I understand, and will continue to understand, the desire for same-sex relations may not be completely socially constructed, but effeminacy, but effeminacy is. As an extreme example, a kid raised by wolves will not have a lisp in an effeminate walk. Not that there's much wrong with those things, but they still might have same-sex tendencies. Well, um, again, the problem is I think that, you know, if you haven't, if you've read to chapter 3 and not to chapter 10, uh, homosexuality is not a single thing. So when I say that bi most men have a bisexual potential, uh, I do think that's an innate potential they have, so they are born with it. Uh, I do think gays are born with the same-sex uh, tendencies as well, but it's also coupled with a sort of effeminacy. So if you read Chapter 3, you'll find that 75% of effeminate boys end up to be gay. Now, that's a kind of correlation that, um, that suggests also a kind of causation, that effeminacy uh, comes with this kind of sexual orientation. Edit. Further need to point out, uh, the example of a Canadian show called One Girl, Five Gays is used. 
I don't know if this show, uh, well, this show, just uh, a little commentary. Yeah, it's One Girl, Five Gays. There's 20 guys on the show. They're all gay. It's a rotating cast, so every show only has five different guys, but there's like 20 guys there. But my point has been has been that uh, they are effeminate, all 20 of them. You know, what what are the odds of that? Like, you can't find one gay guy who's not uh, somewhat effeminate. Uh, but he continues, but it would be better to deduce from this that it is evidence of, a me of the media portrayal of gays, not necessarily gays themselves. In the modern media, the feminine gay guy is often used as comedy relief. It's a niche that works, but it's not necessarily reflective. I understand the book is discussing uh, both gays themselves as well, well as their portrayal, but using modern media as an example of the substantive, uh, substantive nature of homosexuals seems like it is completely different discussion altogether. Well, my point with referencing the show was to, to show something that I personally see all the time in, in, in gay bars is I see a lot of a fem, uh, feminine men. I don't see very, ma very, men, uh, very many masculine men to begin with. Now, you say that, uh, that you don't see, that uh, my experiences are only anecdotal in comparison. Oh, fun, mosquitoes. Uh, but I've rarely come across this. So, so you yourself say that you don't see too many feminine gay guys. Well, I mean, one of the reasons that I talk about the science is because people have different experiences. Now, if you have, you know, an experience where you don't see too many effeminate gay guys, well, I, where are you? I mean, I, I'd love to, to check this out because... You know, I, I haven't seen that. And and the reason that I put in the show One Girl, Five Gays is because, to me, that is my experience. That's what I've seen. And I just wanted an example that anybody can look at. Okay. Oh, goodness. Mm. As a corollary example, I would use the pink-blue masculine-feminine uh, example. It used to be that blue was the color for girls and pink as a subset of red. Uh, was male. Society switched that, and it is now so prevalent in the public psyche that it would be difficult to switch back. But that doesn't mean that little girls have an inherent desire for pink, and little boys have an inherent desire for blue. They don't care until society tells them they should. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that a lot of masculinity and femininity is socially constructed, but I do think that there is still a seed of gender that is different, okay? Uh, that separates men and women uh, inherently and by nature. Same with how gays choose to act and are represented. Well, see, that's the point. If you look at uh, if you look at chapter three and find uh, the study that looked at um, it looked at childhood videos from gay men, and they turned in their childhood videos, and other people were asked to look at these videos and say, based on what you see in childhood videos, is this person going to be gay or straight when they grow up? And as it turns out, uh, gay men are, in fact, uh, effeminate as children as well. So it's not that gays choose to act that way. That's just how they are acting. That's just how they really are. Uh, anyways, uh, interesting read. I will continue uh, to con uh, continue to, I presume, finish reading it. Had to make these comments while they were fresh in my mind. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, if you finish reading it and have other questions, uh, hopefully I can answer them. Uh, maybe I can do it indoors where I don't have to watch out for mosquitoes and things flying and the rats that my uh, yard is apparently full of now. Uh, let's see, did I cover everything? Yeah, okay, well, thank you. Uh, see you later.